That's Matthew Reese, who's terrific in this film, as is the whole cast here in this movie. But when you look at that scene, what do you remember? What do you think? I just think about Matthew Reese. I'd never met him before. I was a big fan of his. And, and that that scene that we did together, that was the, we'd never met, and we, that was the first scene we had. We only had a couple of scenes together, and we're bonded for life from that scene. I saw him recently, and, and I just sort of hugged him. And that's the beautiful thing about art or like you know acting um you're able to explore things um and go to places and if you trust the other actor something kind of special can happen and that that was an experience of that i mean that wasn't i wasn't supposed to put that bag on that wasn't in the script and um then it just happened and uh and it was really and i i it was hard for him to take it off that was real and he was really calling that he was calling somebody to help him and uh it's just something kind of magical happened there and uh yeah i'll never forget that scene was there that kind of improvisation in you know that uh, john wells let you do on that yeah set? john wells was incredible and um it wasn't much dialogue in that scene i think it was like he comes into a restaurant drunk and because uh, about a guy who's sober and he's the first time he's gone out and uh he's you know suicidal and um yeah and it, yeah, John was wonderful, and all those other actors in there, and it just, I think we, we only did it once. I'm pretty sure we only did it once, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, my memory is that. <laughs> I mean, no, I th I'm pretty sure we did it once, yeah. It's, um, it's about a, a, a guy, a chef, who wants to be a Michelin three-star right. chef, and he comes in, but he's got this checkered past, Adam Jones. Yeah, yeah, name? yeah. And, uh, you, you know, you're coming in again. It's another, it's a gray line here, bla not black and white character here. Yes. You watch him evolve through this. Yeah. But also... And Sienna Miller's incredible in that Sienna movie. Miller's great in it, oh too, yeah. yeah. But you watch you cook. Like, yeah, we got to really cook, which is great. You really cook yeah, this stuff. Was, uh, one real quick thing about that American Sniper clip, which is so, just to give you an idea of, like, Clint, that scene. So with David O. Russell, I, he was the first director that I'd worked with who was always not behind the monitor, but actually there, and I, I just loved it. Like, the scene in the diner between me and Jen, David O. Russell was underneath the, the, the table. Uh, which Carrie knows about because I was underneath the table for her scene at the Palm Court. <laughs> um, and um, I remember that scene. I know it's crazy to visualize, but like if the camera just went like this, Clint was right there with his like sunblock on and his hat. And he's just in there going, because I would ask him, I was like, Clint, can you be close? Because he's, I don't know, he like he just fumes come off him because he's so, I, I just love being around him. And, uh, and I'm like, just, you know, let's just talk through it. Because there was nobody there. We were, you know, when we were shooting our coverage, he's like, there he is. Uh. <laughs> and, and he was like, he starts having, he's like, look at that little fucker run. <laughs> it was like, I was like, Clint, stop, stop. I can't do the scene. I was like, I kept laughing. I'm like, Clint, I, I, can't, I can't get through it. <laughs> look at him. There he is. Look at that little, that little piece of shit. There he is. Look at him. <laughs> it was so crazy. Anyway, you had to keep it light on that movie, honestly. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. To do that, oh my God. Just in general, because we had, uh, you know, part of the SEAL Team 3 was one of the members was on Chris's team, and we had real vets there, and, uh, you know, we would shift from crying and laughing throughout a day on that movie, and, uh, you know, Clint was the reason that we would laugh. That movie's st still very pertinent today, and actually, Burnt, it's before the bear, you know? Yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We watched you. I mean, it's like a war zone in a kitchen. Yeah, right there it was. Back. Yeah, and we really got to. We, you know, we shot all of. There was nobody. No else came in and cooked. We did everything, which was wonderful. You had a, a consultant. Oh, Marcus food. Waring had a kitchen underneath. They would make the food, but we would we would be really cooking. But they would they would they taught us everything. And Gordon Ramsay was incredible. Marco Pierre White. I got to study with all of them. It was wonderful. And and Claire, a woman who ran uh, Gordon Ramsay's restaurant on Hospital Road, who now has her own three Michelin star restaurant in London, who's incredible. She, I was with her too. Um, and John is a huge culinary sort of uh, uh, um, obsessive person, and so he knew so much. It, it was really that was a cool. And there, I read Daniel Brühl loves to cook. He was in the movie, and uh, the great Italian actor. He was a great cook. Um, there's so many. Yeah, everybody. And Sienna Miller's an incredible cook, also. Wow. Yeah. Did you eat all the food after? We did. We ate all day long. Yeah. You did. Yeah. It was it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Which is perfect for him because he looked. You know, he was a little plump in the movie. I always wonder, there's a new movie out actually opening today. 
uh, in L.A. called Taste of Things. And oh, really? It's, like, unbelievable. Oh, I got to see Oh, it. yeah. You got to see this movie. It's oh, Juliette Binoche it. and uh, Benoit Majumel, and all they do is eat and cook. Wow. And it's yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. So, you know, how can you make a movie like that and not eat all the uh, props? But, okay, so we're going to move on to your first directorial work here. And there is a Clint Eastwood connection, so more impressions, I hope. Because you do the best Clint Eastwood. Right, I can't talk about him without, I apologize. I, I love it. Yeah, I can't do it without. So he originally was going to direct yes. A Star is Born. Yes. With Beyonce, is that That it? was the idea. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, look, they're going like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he asked me to do it years before, um, in 2000, many years before. And I, I remember I, and I, I went to his office, and, and I just knew I wasn't ready for it. I didn't think I could play this guy who was in the script, you know, beaten down. And I thought I would be acting it. I hadn't done American Sniper, obviously, or even Elephant Man. It wasn't until after those two experiences that I felt... Um, like I could do it, and actually, I was with Clint with American Sniper at the Chateau Marmont, uh, uh, and and um, yeah, and uh, Annie Lennox was singing at the Grammys. I think it was on television, and it was so incredible. And I was watching it, sitting with Clint, like the veins in her neck, and I was like, "There's nothing more powerful than somebody singing. There's just nothing." And I turned to Clint, and I was like, "Maybe we should do that now." And he's like, "No." And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." And that night, that night, I had a dream about it. And I went to Warner Brothers the next morning and met with Greg Silverman, and I pitched him the first 10 minutes of this movie, and I asked him if I could uh, maybe write and direct it. And then he said, yeah, and uh, if you could do it for $20 million. And, um, and then that's when it all started. Wow. Yeah. And was Beyonce still in your head for it? Yeah, and I, and I worked with her, and she was incredible, and we went down the road, and then it, it didn't work out. And then, and then I thought about Adele for a while. Like, it was like, you know, he, he, his career's not great. He goes abroad. It's like, you know, meets this woman. But no, and then that, didn't, that never even, like, took off at all. And then I was with my mother at a cancer benefit, and all of a sudden the, the closing act was Lady Gaga coming out, and she, sing, she sings La Vie en Rose in the, in the cancer benefit. And... and it, it was like crystallized in that moment. And I thought, that's, what was I, how did I ever think anybody else? And I was so lucky. She, I went to meet her the next day or the day after in Malibu at her house. And she came down the stairs, I'll never forget. And right away I was like, oh, this is going to work. I just felt it. And she was, she cooked me like spaghetti and we're talking. And next thing you know, I was like, can we sing? And, and I don't sing at that point at all. And I was like, we sang at her piano. And it was just like, and that was it. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, she gave everything to that movie. I mean, she was such a part of the writing process, everything. She, she is just a force of nature, man. She, she's amazing. I don't think anybody who watched the Oscars that year will ever forget your performance together on the Academy Awards. It was really special. It was amazing. Oh, you just sort of walked up, yeah. as I remember, just walked up out of the audience. And that was all out of fear, Pete. I, I, I said, because <laughs> I thought, like, well, imagine, like, it's, it's better just sitting in, you're already in the room, just start singing. And for the first couple of notes, like your back's to the audience. But I was like, if I was standing in the side, I would be so terrified. I already was so terrified. So that's actually how that, that whole shot started out of my fear of like, how am I going to pull this off? Because I had no desire to sing live on network television. <laughs> but I knew that if I didn't sing, and like she was up there singing shallow with somebody else, I was like, well, that guy obviously can't sing because... <laughs> Because <laughs> he's not doing it. So it was like I had no choice. Uh, but, it, but it wound up being awesome. I, I mean, that was really like a life memory. That was really wonderful. And you did, which doesn't always happen in movies, musicals in particular, uh, did it all live, all the live yeah, stuff. Yeah, all the in vocals the live. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. And that, so how long did it take you to become a singer? Uh, uh, well, with the bandwidth like that. But yeah, uh, yeah, a year, I worked with this incredible uh, vocal coach, uh, Roger Love, and I would go to his, uh, his, his office like three or four times a week. And, uh, you know, and then, we just, and then Lucas Nelson was incredible. And he basically would go down to my basement and sing and write songs and play with his band and uh, just immerse myself. You know, that's such an iconic property, as they say in the business. A Star is Born, going back to 1937 with Janet Gaynor and then Judy Garland's in the 50s and then Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson in the 70s and then all the talk of constantly taking this basic story but making it your own and, and you managed to do that. You managed to oh, thank you. turn it into a love story that was tragic. With the help and, of Eric Roth, incredible writer and another yeah. gentleman. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. It became new again. Sam Elliott was a huge part of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Sam brother Elliott's character. amazing. In fact, the clip we're going to show is with you and Sam Elliott. I'm just curious, before we show that clip, you uh, have a, 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 so much of your performances that I've noticed is in the voice. It's, it's in, uh, you, you, you adopt different voices and things. And here, you're sort of having to sound like your father. Brother. Brother, yeah, a yeah. brother, I mean. You have to sound like your brother. You sort of adopted that. That's right. There. And so did you study, Sam? Oh, that's all I studied. Yeah, yeah. I remember doing, I, I could like do his Sundance sort of interviews like verbatim. After all, I, yeah, I, I, there's certain things that I got found online and I would just go over and over and over and over and over <laughs> until I felt like I could do his voice. Did you do that a, a lot like Chris Kyle? Did you do that with Same him? Same thing. I started work with Tim Monick, an incredible uh, dialect coach. Leonardo DiCaprio had turned me on to him. He had been working with him for years and, we st and, and Brad had worked with him uh, for many years, I think, in Glorious Bastards. And, um, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, um, and he's incredible, and we started working on American Sniper was the first, and then Stars Born and Nightmare Alley and Maestro, yeah. Wow. So what did Sam Elliott think of that when you... I mean, that's how I pitched Sam Elliott the movie. I asked him over, it was so crazy. You think about when you love something so much, you don't realize, like, the stuff, like, like pitching Beyonce a Stars Born. I remember I was so nervous, I had, like, this weird cough as I was pitching it to her. I was like, so then the guy... <coughs> and, then it, and I'm like, what the heck is happening? And Sam Elliott came over, and I, I was talking to him about, like... I would love to maybe see you in a role where you're all, you're just filled with resentment and like you know because I haven't seen you play a role like that like you're usually the wise one but this guy's just filled with bitterness because his brother and and his brother like took his voice and uh, play and then I played him a tape of him, of me doing him at Sundance doing the interview and I was like what do you is that what do you think creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I can't do his voice at all now. But he was like, well, you know, that was a little creepy. Uh, and but but we really got along. And thank thank. I mean, I was screwed if he said no. Um, so he said yes. And then 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 he got an Academy Award nomination. The yeah, first one in his career, which yeah. was so well deserved. Sure was. Um, so that movie originally in the 70s uh, was uh, produced, among other people, by John Peters. Yes. And John Peters <laughs> had contractual everything on that. Yeah. You couldn't make the movie unless he said yes. So he was going right. to pull this thing. The truth is, the only reason the movie got made is because I went to him and asked him and he deferred uh, his million dollar grandfathered in producer fee. And that's the only reason why we were able to make the movie. Wow. Well, we cleverly paired this with a clip from Licorice Pizza in which you play John Peters. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paul Thomas Anderson, who was my hero, called me years later and said, hey, I'd love you to play John Peters. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah. So life is funny, you know. It is. <laughs> And you're brilliant as John Peters. You got uh, a SAG nomination for Best Supporting Actor for like eight minutes on screen, which is unforgettable eight minutes. So we're going to see that. I just have to ask you about that. I'm the world's biggest Paul Thomas Anderson fan, and I, this is my favorite movie that he's ever done. But let's take a look at A Star is Born and then Licorice Pizza. <laughs> 